As you learn about the narcissistic pattern, it's also wise to reflect on the much healthier alternatives. Now below, you're going to find a link to my new extensive course called Ready, Set, Connect. It addresses both the mindset and the skills involved in gratifying relationships, and I hope you'll find it to be quite therapeutic. There's a complaint that I hear very commonly from individuals who have to live and engage with strongly narcissistic people, and that complaint is, that narcissist that's in my life has the nerve, has the gall to say, I'm a narcissist. And uh, it, it's, it's a very common kind of pattern that I see here. Uh, one of the things that we know is that individuals who have a very difficult personality and they can be hypersensitive and controlling and condescending, uh, rather than saying, you know, I need to take a look at that. Instead, what they'll do is they'll say, well, the reason that I have any issues, if I have issues, is that I'm surrounded by all these people who just don't know how to do life. And, and I hear that those uh, people called narcissists are no good. So if you're making my life miserable, that must mean you're a narcissist. And they have a very shallow appreciation for that word. And they just use it in a way that, uh, that uh, is offensive to you, which is uh, what they like. I'll give you an example. Uh, there was a man that I knew that had gone into counseling because of domestic violence. Um, he had been arrested not once but twice, and he was ordered by the court to come in for anger management. Had a deep history of uh, losing his temper and being hyper-controlling and domineering. And one of the things he mentioned to me was, uh, hey, your, your, uh, your videos are really helpful. Uh, and he said, explain so much of what I have to deal with. And then he just rattled off all the problems that he had with his girlfriend. Uh, and basically she was this and she was that. And it's like, man, just knowing all that just makes me understand that I'm not the crazy one here. When in fact, it's like, no, you need to take your focus on the one person you can do something about. But instead of doing that, it's like she is the narcissist. Or another illustration, you have a woman who's, uh, who's known inside a family system as being the micromanager, extraordinaire, uh, never met a person that she couldn't find things to criticize about, extremely judgmental, very narrow opinions, and very difficult to get along with. And she would pick up on that word and say, well, uh, those people over there, they must be narcissists. And what she meant by that was, rather than looking at herself, she would say, well, those are people who fail to go along with my schemes. And so that must mean there, there's something wrong with them. Uh, I hear the word narcissist is a bad word, so that's what you are. And you can see that uh, when, uh, when these individuals say you are a narcissist, First of all, uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the words uh, that, that are low-lying fruit. There's a lot of projection going on. There's a lot of gaslighting going on, and I'm going to get to that in a, a couple minutes. But these are individuals who are just simply looking for some sort of word that they can weaponize and use against you. And it's important for you to realize that's what they're up against. Now, let's keep in mind, when I use that word narcissist or narcissism, I'm, I'm talking about the human condition. It's not just some sort of uh, condescending label that we want to put in onto someone. But we, what we're saying is every single person uh, from the day they're born to the day they die will have some sort of issue at some time with their own selfishness. And they need to be in control. And sometimes we can be manipulative and have a superior attitude over others. And so it, it's a pattern that's on a spectrum and each one of us has the possibility for it to come out. Healthy individuals will say, I see that and I understand what the human condition is and I'm going to examine who I am relative to that. And so they keep it contained. It's not a defining feature. It's not something they run with on a, on a, a constant basis. And they have many other healthier alternatives that they draw upon, but that possibility does exist. And that's for the narcissist, all, that's all that matters. But when we talk about a true narcissist, we're talking about somebody who is defined by those characteristics. 
It's not just something that may slip up from time to time, but it's pervasive. It's, a, it's an ongoing thing and it, it's so disruptive that it becomes highly dysfunctional and you simply are, una are unable to engage with them. So keep in mind that they think of that word very differently from a guy like me who uses it in a descriptive kind of way. Now, <clears throat> let's recognize when you're talking about uh, that narcissist who accuses you of being a narcissist, this is an individual who doesn't know how to self-regulate. They're constantly thinking, if there's a problem in my world, it has to be you. It can't come from the inside of me. And so they're very externally based in the way that they look at problems. They, they just simply uh, can't think, you know, I've got some things I need to work on. And uh, another thing is they, they tend to have a little too flattering of an opinion of themselves. What they like to do is pick up on some of their nice moments. You know, I, I emptied the dishwasher, I helped you with that project at work, or I, I gave cookies to a little old lady. And they'll say, see, I can't possibly be a narcissist. Now you over here, you missed an appointment or you did this wrong or uh, you were critical. That must mean you're a, a narcissist. And so they have a really strong selective memory about those kind of things. I mean, to the point where it can be quite absurd. Now, let's go a little bit deeper and ask what's really going on inside that narcissist who will not take responsibility for their actions. And in fact, they'll say, you are the narcissist. You are the problem. You are the one who causes my difficulties. First and foremost, let's remember, number one, Narcissists constantly think competitively. Uh, they know that there's a judgmental system out there. There's a grading system, who's high, who's low, who's excellent, who's no good. And so they have to be the one that's on top. Like I say, they, they hear that that word narcissist is a bad word. So they just think, okay, I'll use that word. And they weaponize it against you. And so they don't mean it in an, any kind of descriptive kind of way. They just simply think there's a club that I can use and it allows me to maintain dominance. I'm more than happy to use that club. A second thing to understand is to the narcissist, staying in control over you is much more important than being honest. It basically, the narcissist is going to more or less imply, I'm just going to make up my own narrative about who I am and what my world is in such a way that allows me to be that winner. And so they can use all sorts of broad, sweeping generalizations where they overlook a whole lot of details. But you see, it's all part of their need to stay in control over you. And for them, at least it works. A third thing that we want to remember is narcissists are very prone towards having a strong agenda. There's a certain way things are supposed to be. Now, I use that word agenda. We can actually use a different term, and that would be the word setup. Uh, by having their agenda, it sets you up to fail. Uh, well, you were supposed to do this, this, and this. And then if you don't uh, comply with their agenda, it's like, well, see, you're the problem. And that's all they can focus on. And they see you as being disloyal. They see you as being combative if you don't do everything on the agenda. And it doesn't even dawn on them that perhaps the agenda itself is the problem. All they see is you're not doing what I say. Therefore, you're a narcissist. Now, I, I mentioned... Um, uh, the, uh, they weaponize uh, the, the word narcissism. Another thing to remember, a fourth thing to remember about narcissists is uh, they like to use what we might refer to as the preemptive strike uh, tactic. If they can see you as being problematic before you can get into their, uh, their issues about who they are, then they win. And then when they accuse you of having something wrong and you say something defensive, they'll turn around and say, what's your problem? What do you do it? And so uh, they're constantly trying to figure out how to gain that upper hand through the defense, through the preemptive strike. A fifth thing, and here's where I'm going to use the, uh, the concept of uh, gaslighting. The gaslighting narcissist mantra is your confusion equals my dominance. That's their math. They love that. And then a sixth thing, we're going to talk about their uh, projection. They also have a mantra that says, if I can see a problem in you first, it means that my problems don't exist. And so uh, it's another part of their manipulation. Uh, these individuals uh, think labels are all that matters and uh, descriptive thinking is not something that I do. And so if they can come up with a label like narcissist and make you look bad and sound bad, 
It's their way of saying, I'm a highly judgmental person, I'm psychologically lazy, and uh, what I'm doing is I'm taking a shortcut to try to make you out to be uh, the one who's going to solve my problems because, you see, I don't have anything on the inside to draw from. That's what we're dealing with. So when that narcissist comes along and says, you are the narcissist, you are the problem, let's keep in mind that narcissists are desperate for you to argue with them. They're desperate for you to become upset because when you do, then they can come back and say, you just proved my point. And so what I'm hoping you can do is when they uh, throw that, uh, that accusation uh, towards you, you can listen to it and you can uh, honestly reflect on yourself. Well, is there any truth? I mean, if I did do something that was inappropriate, can I take responsibility for it? And can I be honest about myself, pluses, minuses, and everything? And uh, when you have that objectivity, that throws them off. A second thing I want to uh, remind you of as you try to figure out how to respond to this is don't think of that word narcissist as being a club. It's not a weapon. When we talk about narcissism, we're talking about a shorthanded way of describing uh, the whole particular way of life that it represents. Selfishness, dominance, control, uh, defensiveness, it's uh, entitlement, etc. And so let, let's use it as a descriptor, not as a weapon. In addition, I'm going to remind you, and you've heard me say this before, there's pretty close to a zero chance that you're going to be able to convince the narcissist that he or she is in the wrong uh, what they'll do is they'll say, what are you talking about? You, you don't even know anything. And so if you try to convince them, they're just going to turn around and uh, use it as a, an excuse to come back with their barrage of insults. Save your breath. It's not going to work. Uh, understand that when they falsely label you, what they're saying is, I'm in so much pain relative to my own uh, disarray on the inside that I can't look at it. Therefore, it's a lot easier for me to examine it in you. So the best response when a narcissist says, you're a narcissist, is to simply respond with, we think differently. That's it. You don't have to say anything more. And then uh, remind yourself, it's a pattern on a spectrum. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to own my moments when I am inappropriate, and I'm not going to make it a centerpiece to my life. Uh, narcissists don't understand that, and that's on them. I'm not playing along with that game. Now, I hope this can give you some good awareness of what you might be dealing with. If you've not already hit that subscribe button, I would encourage you to do so. I'm going to keep more videos coming towards you because I'm hoping it can add to your educational process. In addition, when you're dealing with individuals like this, it can be so important and so essential to seek out some therapy, somebody that can help you objectively sift through all of this and keep you honest about that. And so, uh, you know, I've been sponsored for years by the people at BetterHelp.com. Uh, if, if you need it, go ahead and go through the link and get a, uh, have a therapist that help, can help you sift this out so that you can have that honesty about who you are and then uh, have good strategies about how you're going to uh, deal with some of those dishonest individuals. There's a link below and I would encourage you to get the therapy that you might uh, need. In addition, I want you to uh, consider the possibility of courses. I put a lot of work into them and they're very extensive. Uh, uh, each course has at least 25 videos with written uh, materials that go with each video, guided questions. We have Ready, Set, Connect about making healthy connections, true healthy connections. This is me about establishing your boundaries, free to be, finding yourself, despite the controllers. And we're going to have more courses come along in the, uh, in the near future. Likewise, I have my webinars, which is more like a 90% uh, 90 minute uh, presentation. They're available on my uh, website, along with many articles and access to our podcast, my books, plenty of resources. Okay, the narcissist says, you are the narcissist. Consider the source. Know that you're dealing with a, a master gaslighter, a master projector. Uh, that's what it is. But then the, the, uh, the real challenge for you is to say, I need to know myself so that I can be honest. And when that dishonest narcissist comes my way, I'm just not going to take the bait. In the process then, I'm hoping that sets you up to be a more steady kind of an individual. You're not going to get inside their chaos and you can become that person of peace that they're simply not going to be able to, uh, to manage. Be a person of peace.